Hi you guys, it's Brandy. I'm the owner and artisan behind Brushed by Brandy and I'm here this week with a really exciting finish for you guys. Um, and this piece is really special to me because it's my first piece involving the new transfer line from Dixie Belle Paint, um, the Bells and Whistle line. And um, it's my first piece using one of their transfers. So the first one that stuck out to me was this design behind me, which is the Cacti and Succulents transfer. And I'm gonna show you on this video how we build it up and how I use this buildable design across the front of my piece. So this is the new Bells and Whistles transfers from Dixie Bell. This is the Cacti and Succulents transfer that I use. If you wanna see all the other designs, I have a complete video of them also on my YouTube channel and photos of them on my Facebook page. Um, but I hope you guys will follow along as we complete this finish right here on my flagship piece for the Dixie Bell transfer line. I found this piece on my local Facebook marketplace and it stood out to me because it's kind of unique. It's a little vanity, but it also opens up into a jewelry armoire. The base of this piece is a laminate finish, so I know right off the bat I need to apply Dixie Belle Slick Stick before I start painting. Slick Stick is a gripping primer from Dixie Belle that's going to give my paint something to bite onto. With a coat of Slick Stick on the entire body of my piece, I do have some damage to my top that I'm not able to repair, so I'm going to camouflage it with a textured finish using Dixie Mud and a textured roller. I do this by applying a thin layer of Dixie Mud over the entire top of my piece using a spatula tool. Then I'm going to roll my textured roller through the mud and it's going to leave an imprint in the finish. Once this dries, I'll sand it all even and have a very subtle alligator finish in the top of this piece. I'm going to let that top dry and go ahead and get started on my paint finish. I start off by lightly sanding my a slick stick using a 220 grit sanding pad from Dixie Bell. And then I want to make sure I tack off my dust using a cloth. I pulled my color inspiration on this piece from my transfer itself. So I'm using Dixie Belle Mint Julep and I'm shading it with a little bit of antebellum blue and then some midnight sky down at the bottom of the legs. I really love how these colors ended up blending together. This is a great color combination. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend over the front of my piece. This is my first coat so it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and apply it with my drawers inside of my piece so I get a consistent blend over the front and then I'm gonna take them out and touch up around the frame of the drawers themselves. I will slow it down and walk you through the blend as we get to our second coat, but this is just my base. I'm working out my color combination and my concept at this point. I also want to make sure that I paint around the frame so that it matches the ed edges of my drawers. I don't want to have any of that white slick stick peeking out from underneath my paint. Down on the legs is where I start to incorporate my darkest color, which is Midnight Sky, and I blend this into the antebellum blue. This just adds a little bit of drama to the legs of this piece, which have a very slight curve to them. It's a really cute furniture piece. I'm going to do the same thing I did on my drawer faces and give a first coat of a blend onto the side of this piece. Remember, this isn't just a desk. It also opens up to a jewelry armoire. So this drawer or this door on the side is where it opens up for necklace hanging. I start on just by laying my paint on in a basic framework with my mint julep in the center and then my antebellum blue around the edge. And then I'm going to come around and just start working them together in small areas at a time. I'm not going to work about, worry about perfecting the blend at this point. It's just my base coat. I really just want to get the colors on and get some coverage so that I can perfect these on my second coat. Okay, let's go ahead and add our second blended coat onto this. This was just my rough base coat, it's not perfect. First thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and give it a light sanding with my Dixie Belle sanding sponge. This is a 220 grit sanding sponge and it just takes down a little bit of the bite on that paint and any dust spots that I might have had or uneven spots. And I do that because if I rub my hand over, I can feel the difference that makes in my paint. Okay, I'm a firm believer that whatever color you start with when you're blending is the color that's gonna end up dominant. And I want that to be my green. So I'm going to start with my mint julep here. I'm gonna add a little bit of water just to kind of lubricate the surface so that my brush glides easier over the top of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint basically what's gonna look like a square in the center of this here. So this is a basic two color blend and I'm gonna work out around the edges so that these two colors work into each other. So once I've got my mint julep really covering my center, I'm gonna kind of, I always bring it out a little bit further than I actually want it. And that way I have a little bit of space in my paint to work it into my next color. So that's a nice wide square. I'm gonna call it a square. And then I'm gonna come back with my second color, which is antebellum blue. And I'm just gonna create an outline. 
I have to put my paint on the surface before I can work them together. Just a basic outline of paint. Just kind of like that. Okay, basically everywhere, um, except for these far corners, I want these two colors to kind of just disappear into each other. I'm gonna come back with my brush for my mint julep and I'm just gonna start working these together. And I want this antebellum blue to kind of turn into a shade of blue green that's somewhere in between the two colors. I'm just gonna brush them together. I have barely any paint on this brush because I laid most of what I had off onto that center square that I created. And then back up this side, just kind of creating my basic shape at this point. And you can see how just by over brushing it with that semi dry brush, it kind of creates this very light shade along the edge. And that's what I want because only those four corners is where I want to keep it the true antebellum blue. All right, once I've got my colors fairly blended into each other, I'm gonna come back with my neutral brush. Now this is a clean dry brush. I like to use the Dixie Belle Oval Medium. I've used it for the rest of my piece, so what I do in between uses is I just uh, wipe it off onto a rag so that it stays as clean and dry as possible. If you notice this brush starts getting a little bit muddy, don't hesitate to uh, pull out another brush and start using that. And I'm just gonna start swirling these colors into each other, just right along the edge. And those soft bristles act kind of like a feather duster and just kind of erase those lines in between the colors. And once I've swirled them together, I come back and I'm just going to ever so lightly, just with a super light touch of my brush, I'm just going to ever so lightly feather out the swirl marks I create in my paint. And I'm going to work myself around this block that I created. And the swirling motion kind of pulls the antebellum into the mint julep. It pulls the mint julep into the antebellum and creates a band of this color that's an in-between shade. I keep going around here. Now my brush is starting to get a little muddy. I can tell because it's starting to pull some of that blue out into my grain. So I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe that brush off. I wanna keep it as clean and dry as possible. It's just acting as my feather duster. Same thing down along the bottom and up here. All right, let's go ahead and clean this brush off one more time and we will clean up some of these lines. Now I wanna go ahead and give myself a little bit more mint julep to work with. I did not add any paint. I'm just using what was in the brush itself. The only time I added paint was when I made my initial square around the center. This just kind of helps true up my green a little bit. So I get that nice heavy contrast. I like my darks to be dark and my lights to be nice and light. All right, and then I like that. Let's go ahead and check up just on my far edges. Remember I said I wanted to keep these four edges to be my true antebellum. So I'm gonna true these back up again where I've muddied them up anywhere. And then I can work those edges in and this entire side will be done. So it's a little bit of swirling with my neutral brush, keep it clean and dry. Let those soft bristles just work the colors together. All right, I got that corner, let's get this one. All right, let's do this bottom one. I have not added any moisture at this point. The only water I put on here was the first mist that I gave this side when I first started working on it. Any areas I feel like I wanna kinda of soften out, I just go over them a little bit more. Just that soft, clean, dry brush. I like the um, soft bristles of the synthetic brushes from Dixie Belle do this really nicely. I feel like I wanna swirl this spot out a little bit more. So it almost becomes kind of a dry brushing technique because my paint starts to set up and I'm just using the little bit of moisture that's left in the paint to work them together a little bit. All right, I like this blend. I'm gonna go ahead and let it dry, but I'm gonna clean this up right here. And this just is antebellum blue on its own. So I got it a little bit of the, the julep down there. I'm just gonna brush that out. All right, I'm gonna let that dry, but I feel like it's a good match for the rest of my body push this back and I'll show you what the outside of my door looks like. 
I feel like those two are a close match inside and out. Okay, my drawer sides, I have to show these. These are super cute. This is the new cacti transfer from Dixie Belle. And I love how this turned out. These transfers are a perfect size for these smaller pieces, kind of something that didn't really exist in the market before. And I don't have any halo on there. That is a super clean application and it looks perfect up against my mint julep. But what I wanna work on right now is I wanna work on the front of this piece right here. Pause. Okay, the first thing I wanna do before I start on these drawers is show you where my inspiration came from. So this is the cacti and succulent transfer from Dixie Belle. And I'm pulling my color inspiration from this transfer. Um, I, I like to do this if I'm starting a transfer with a transfer. I pull my color inspiration from there. And that really helps me um, as a jumping off point. But I love these shades that are in here. The purple, the green, a little bit of the blue. So I'm going to combine these on the front of my piece when I'm done. But you can see how these colors are going to tie in with the colors of my piece perfectly. And then on my drawer sides, I'm going to use these brighter color transfers as a cute little pop of color when you pull those drawers out. So that is our inspiration, but let's go ahead and work one of these drawer fronts too. I have six of these little drawers. This is a um, desk that's also a jewelry armoire. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, same as I did on the side of my piece, I'm gonna give that a light sanding and then I wanna make sure that I tack off that dust. And then I'm gonna start again with my mint julep. I'm going to just mist my surface and give myself a little bit of the mint julep across the front of my drawer. Once I've got that, I'm going to come back and add a little bit of my antebellum blue, creating that same sort of frame, only this is not going to be a four-sided frame. I'm just going to do it on two sides, so when I line these drawers up, it's kind of a stripe down the center. I say stripe, but it's really going to look like a highlight is what my goal is. I want to make sure I get all the way around my drawer and then let's go ahead and work these two together. Now I did go ahead and get myself a new clean dry brush because I'd used that other one for the entire body and it had started getting a little muddy. But same process, I'm going to start swirling these two colors together. This pulls my antebellum out into the mint julep and then I'm just going to feather dust that out. Same on this side. I'm going to swirl these colors together Pull them into each other and then feather dust it out. Okay, and once I've done a drawer, I know that I need to keep this brush from getting super muddy, so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it off on my rag. And let's just clean up the center a little bit. I'm gonna pull a little bit more of my green out into those edges just so they don't get too dark. This is all done with that clean, dry brush. And then I feel like this is a nice, soft look on the front, and I wanna make sure that my drawer top matches so that when this is pulled out, you don't see any rough spots where my paint lines end. Here's what it looks like with a coat of paint over the entire body. So my smaller drawers have this smaller pattern on them, and then I'm moving up to my larger drawers. I use the brighter cactus. Now I'm gonna flip them over and we're gonna do the other side of these together. Now, um, for the other side of these, I'm going to use the loose cactus. So I'm going to have to make a layered design myself. I'm going to go ahead and cut out these brightly colored cactus from this uh, side of the transfer right here. So I'm going to start off with this largest transfer right here. And I'm just going to peel it off. And I'll place this. I want it to run all the way to my drawer edge. And then let's go ahead and put this on. I love these loose designs like this because I can stack and layer them and create any sort of design that I want. I feel more freedom with cutting them apart. All right, and that one's on. I will say with these new Dixie Belle transfers, they go on extremely easily. These are really, really hard to make a mistake on. Um, probably easier than any transfer I've put on before. All right, and that one here. And I don't know if I want to layer this third one on, so I'll probably save that and let it be extra for another drawer side. I feel like that filled my, those two filled my space really nicely. All right, that's a beautiful application right there. All right, now I'm gonna finish up layering these designs on the sides of these drawers. Once I'm all done with these, I went ahead and sealed them in a coat of satin clear coat so my transfers are sealed underneath the clear coat. Look at how adorable these drawer sides are peeking out. I'm super excited for this transfer. 
I really love buildable transfer designs. And so what that means is you can cut up the designs and make any sort of layout that you want out of them versus a transfer that has a set layout that you're kind of a little more restricted in how you use it. I feel like with buildable designs, you can really customize the layout to the size and shape of your furniture piece. So I'm showing you here how I go about laying out a furniture transfer. I started out with a fairly large piece, which was my base cactus, and then I'm just layering smaller pieces on top of it, and I build it out as large as I want it to be. Remember the top of this piece also has a textured finish, so these transfers lay perfectly over texture as well. I'm working from side to side, so what I do on one side of the transfer, I then go mimic it on the other side, and in the end I have a symmetrical design. I let the design of the leaves sort of cascade over the front of the drawer. In this case, I did end up using this entire transfer on this furniture piece. I was kind of determined to use every single piece on it. You can really choose whether you want a few well-chosen placements or whether you want to apply them over the entirety of your piece. I kept my placements nice and balanced so it's symmetrical over the front. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how I would clean out flocked drawers. So I start off by vacuuming. Okay, once they're all vacuumed, I vacuum first because I don't want to grind any of the dirt into the velvet. I will take a nylon brush and I've got a few different sizes here. Um, these work. This one's a little more firm, so I like this for getting in corners. This for smaller spaces. You can even use a toothbrush for this. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to brush this fabric. And I brush all of the stuff out of the corners. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to vacuum them again now that I've loosened up anything that's left over. So just make sure you brush them really good. And then I'll vacuum it again now that it's all loosened up. Okay, so you can see, let me compare this to one that has not been cleaned at all. How much cleaner that looks. And then I can just brush out any of those vacuum marks using my nylon brush again and it will just bring back the consistency of the fabric itself. I finish this piece off by brushing a coat of satin clear coat over the entirety of the body. This seals my transfer in. It also sealed my softly textured top as well. I am a huge fan of these colors together in this transfer. This piece turned out better than I expected. It also has a small mirror with it that I painted in the mint julep and antebellum blue to match. The soft texture on top turned out perfectly and I just used my original hardware. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll click the subscribe button. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube.